September 29th, 1982. 12-year-old Mary Kellerman had a cold. Her parents gave her a single capsule of extra-strength Tylenol. The same day, 27-year-old Mary Reiner takes a Tylenol just days after giving birth to her fourth child. Paula Prince takes a Tylenol in her Chicago home. Mary McFarland takes a Tylenol in the back room of her work. Adam, Stanley, and Teresa Janus take two Tylenols each. Within the next two days, all seven are pronounced dead. Mary Kellerman had left her bed to use the bathroom. Her father finds her unresponsive and she dies at the hospital. Mary Reiner's husband finds her on the floor of their home. She is pronounced dead in the morning. Paula Prince isn't found until October 1st after she didn't attend her sister's dinner party. Mary McFarland's co-workers take her to the hospital where she dies. Adam Janus passes in a hospital room held by his brother Stanley and his sister-in-law Teresa. The married couple returns home and takes Tylenol to mourn. Stanley is pronounced dead in the house. Teresa dies in the night. Three people are dead, and another is in critical condition tonight. His brother and sister-in-law were so upset by his death that they went back to the house and took some Tylenol from the same bottle. Only that uh, there's a common source. One of the victims took the pills he bought to his home. Tylenol is the name brand of the pain-relieving chemical acetaminophen. This drug has been used since the 19th century to reduce fever, relieve coughs, tone down headaches, etc., in 1959, Johnson & Johnson released their patented, over-the-counter version of the drug. This pill, Tylenol, is essentially the same as any other brand names of acetaminophen, like Advil, Calpol, and Aspirin. It didn't take long for investigators to connect the consumption of Tylenol between all seven victims. All witnesses said the victim had swallowed the pill just minutes before collapsing, and Paula, whose death had no witnesses, had an open bottle of Tylenol sitting on the counter, only feet away from her body. When medical examiner Edmund Donahue smelt the distinct scent of almonds coming from the collected bottles of the families, a test for cyanide was immediately ran, as the poison smells strongly of the bitter nuts. By October 1st, investigators concluded that the Tylenol had been poisoned with potassium cyanide. The second contaminated bottle was one of thousands confiscated from store shelves. As far as we know, the children's Tylenol, the chewable, have not been implicated yet. I'm scared, really, that something, somebody could have tampered with some of the other products. Investigators confirmed today that the cyanide found in Tylenol capsules at this Bronxville Woolworths last night. Poison control lines and hospitals alike were flooded with an influx of terrified people, afraid that they had been poisoned. The sad reality doctors and phone operators had to tell their patrons was that if they really had been poisoned like the other seven victims, they wouldn't have been able to make it to the phone, let alone if they had made it to the hospital. Autopsies of the victims showed that they each had 100 to 1,000 times the lethal dose of cyanide in their system. Whoever was behind this wanted to make sure that there were no survivors. Johnson & Johnson, the company that owns, manufactures, and sells Tylenol, recalled all Tylenol from both shelves and homes. Police and ambulances drove through the streets, speaking through their bullhorns, warning people not to take Tylenol. Employees stationed in front of stores warned consumers to flush any Tylenol they had down the toilet. Flush it all down the mall, okay? Hold on to the bottles. Don't take any Tylenol extra strength for the time being until you hear otherwise. Johnson & Johnson offered a $100,000 reward for any information leading to the capture, conviction, and sentencing of whoever was responsible for this. On October 5th, the United States Attorney General and the Federal Bureau of Investigation joined the case. Because all victims had gotten their Tylenol from different stores, and because those stores had gotten it from different production plants, the case started out with over 1,200 leads. What is even more terrifying is that amongst 10 million recalled pills, 50 poisoned ones were found across eight different bottles. Five were from the victims, two were sent back in the recall, and the final bottle was still sitting on a shelf unsold. It was determined that what most likely happened was that the culprit went to the pharmacy, bought the different bottles of pills, opened the capsules, replaced the powdered acetaminophen with powdered potassium cyanide, closed the capsules, replaced them into the bottle, and returned them to the store on October 28th.
The cyanide pills could not have been in their bottles for longer than 36 hours because of how delicate the capsule's coating is. The cyanide would have eaten right through it if they had sat for much longer. This narrowed down the suspect pool to people who had been in the Chicago area in the days before the deaths. Despite this, the case has never been officially solved. DNA evidence was not widely understood at the time, and the use of surveillance cameras was rare. No one was caught on tape, no fingerprints were left behind, and no DNA evidence was ever collected. Police are looking for disgruntled employees, angry customers, anybody with a grudge against the stores or Tylenol. Police are even checking stock transactions to see whether someone was trying to push down the value of Johnson & Johnson stock. No single person, or even a group of single persons that stand out above the rest at this point in time, Two cases, two sets of evidence, which strangely somehow seemed to both connect with each other and to conflict with each other. There were two suspects authorities came very close to securing arrest warrants and charges for, Roger Arnold and James Lewis. Roger Arnold was a 48-year-old dock worker. At the time of the murders, he had worked in a jewel warehouse with Mary Reiner's father. Adam Janus had bought his poisoned Tylenol from a jewel convenience store. Mary Reiner bought her poisoned Tylenol from a pharmacy just across the street from where Roger Arnold's wife worked. After someone gave police a tip about Arnold having said some suspicious things in a bar one night, authorities were able to get a search warrant for his home. They found various how-to books on crime and evidence of chemistry. This, however, was not enough to charge Arnold with anything, and he was never able to be brought in for any further questioning. On October 6th, Johnson & Johnson received a photocopied, unsigned ransom letter demanding for $1 million to be wired to a specific bank account, or else whoever had written the note would continue killing people and poisoning their products. The fingerprints of James Lewis were recovered from this letter. Lewis, at the time, was a tax accountant, but he had a criminal past and a history of poor mental health. He was on the run until December 13th, but... Oddly, the bank account he had demanded be paid was not his. It belonged to a Mr. Frederick Miller McKehy. McKehy had apparently stolen $511 from Lewis, and he was only attempting to get Mr. McKehy's account put under investigation in the hopes that it would bring attention to this theft. Lewis was, and still is in some circles, the main suspect in the case. There was never enough evidence to prosecute him, but... He often toyed with police, taunting them with the possibility of him having gotten away with seven murders. In 2010, he even wrote a book called Poison, The Doctor's Dilemma, a fictional book about deaths in Michigan by poisoned water that followed almost the same storyline as the real Chicago Tylenol murders. No one expected for Tylenol to bounce back from this. It was widely predicted that Tylenol would never make a comeback, having costed the Johnson & Johnson Company upwards of $10 million, and with over 100,000 separate news articles printed. However, Johnson & Johnson worked with the Food and Drug Administration to create the tamper-proof plastic and foil seals that we have today. As someone once said, the most important cautions are written in blood.